Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Sheila Murray. If you've been listening to my voice, reading my blog posts, you will recognize my voice or my words or my introduction before you will know me as a person. So I uh, am recording this now on Zoom so that I can add it to YouTube and be able to link to it within my blog because WordPress does not let me embed a video right now. I think that's an extra fee or layer of business that I need to buy into, but uh, I'm assuming that most of you have come to know me through the blog. So that's why I'm I'm going to be speaking to you as my community. You um you have done more for me than you could know because you've been there as a I guess almost a transparent host um or or guidepost to help get me through the last few years. And I've been on WordPress for over 10 years, but when we all became so isolated during the the COVID uh, situation, shall we call it, um, with the lockdowns with, uh, and we we had just moved off grid, so, we didn't know that anything was happening or what was coming, but we made a conscious choice to give off-grid living a 90-day try, which turned into 17 months because of lockdowns and things happening the way they did. We we couldn't move our RV. We couldn't get into uh, a campground and that type of thing for several months. So, um but we ultimately ended up changing our living environment, not to spiral, but that's what this is about, integrating the spirals. So I'm integrating, and there's my triple spiral pendant that I wear every day on my mother's chain, honoring my ancestors, my mother, my father, my grandparents on my mother's side, grandparents on my father's side, whenever I speak of them, you know, some people will speak to, of their parents who have passed on or their other beloveds or their ancestors and say, may they rest in peace. I, I didn't grow up with that as a, as a familial or cultural type of expression. And so everything that I've learned, I've had to learn uh, through the experiences of what life has has put in front of me and what I've been challenged with or presented with. So um, this is something that's came to me through, <clears throat> it literally did come through the spiral process. Um, so you've probably already read on my blog post about why integrating the spirals, how I birthed this process or developed it or codified it in 2019 and 2020 as we were, as I was presented with the spirals in Ireland and tapped into this ancient wisdom. And I'll try to go broad and wide speaking here because there's so much about that that is still unknown. And I, I am on academic sites that are still trying to bring forth an understanding of what the spirals meant, who carved them in the stone, all that, all that stuff. Um, but there's a certain level of knowing that we get from everything that informs us, everything that becomes form within us, from speaking with other people, from reading books, from watching TV, movies, playing games, uh, going to work, um, just the process of living and what we tend to be attracted to and buy and bring into our homes and what nurtures us, that informs us. The vibrations of all those things 
because everything is vibration in the universe, the vibration of all those things we bring into us or surround ourselves with. And so they inform us. My blanket from Ireland, the spiral pendant, the chain uh, that my mother had worn around her neck that my father gave me at my mother's passing. The chair that I sit in that supports my body, you know? But again, if you followed me and if you've read my blog posts for any time, you'll know that I am not this body. I'm a spirit wearing a meat suit or a clothing of skin and clothes and hair now. My son shaved my head during the demic, during the lockdown, so nobody could cut their hair. Nobody, you couldn't get into a salon to get a haircut. And I have naturally curly hair. It was ridiculous living off grid, hot, sweaty, couldn't bathe that often. It was just easy. And then I had friends that were going through chemo treatment. There was so many layers and nuances to what brought that decision about. And yes, some tequila as well. But it was a, it was a magnificent, magical, mystical experience to have my, my adult son shave my head. And then when, when he got to this part of my head and saw that my hair starts in this crown area and it literally spirals out, I don't know to this day if everybody's hair grows like that, but um, he said his words to me in that moment were something like he had been shaving my dad's head before my dad passed for he had he had been shaving his head for probably two or three years that he had went to live with him after my mother passed. And so, um, yes, two years, I, I'm correcting myself. And so he said, your hair grows, mama, just like Papal's, which was his name for my dad. So he said, your hair grows from your scalp, just like your dad's. And that just, it was one of the most touching moments that we had during 17 months of living on the same property in different dwellings when we were living off grid. So there were moments, special moments, special times, um, really did a lot of internal inner work. My husband had a stroke then too, but we didn't know it. Uh, found out later this last October when he had a debilitating stroke and in the hospital when they did the CAT scan we could see the dark area of the brain where they said this is uh, a CAT scan shows you what happened in the past the MRI shows you what's happening right now so that's why they do both tests uh, and they said so this was probably a year or two years ago. And that's during that time when we lived off grids. So we were under, we put ourselves under a lot of stress uh, being the age we are. And then going into that type of situation, really fairly unprepared. I mean, it was like a, a toddler going to kindergarten. That's what I would equate it to. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to go through integrated spiral or integrating the spirals now because I've updated it. And what I want to do now is share my screen. And... Yes, start share. Here we go. You are sharing the screen. I'm not seeing the
Yes, hopefully I am sharing the entire screen. That's what I want. I wanna walk us through this process. There we go. This technology here, I just do this every day for a living. And uh, and yet, every time I go to do it, there's something we'll, I'll hit a little snag on. So you're not alone if you do this as well. And uh, yes, all right. So we'll see how this uh, how this goes. I also want to record. There we go. Beginning the recording now that I can play the audio in case there's any glitch with getting the Zoom recording over to YouTube. You know, as a business analyst and a technical writer, I have learned that backups are so important and redundancy. So in case one technology fails, you have a backup and another way of sharing things. Not that I don't mind talking about this because I can talk about it every single day. And I plan to as soon as I retire from my day job. <laughs> Namaste. It is lovely to have you all here. Whether you're watching this now with me or whether you're watching a replay. And most assuredly, most will be watching a replay. Thank you so much for being here with me and for giving me the time and the space to share this with you. So from that background of living off grid, as you just heard about, and that happening right after the trip to Ireland, England and Scotland, where in Ireland, I was presented with the triple spirals engraved in the cave uh, of the tomb, rather, that is a Neolithic, monolithic, ancient um, structure and sacred site. These lessons came into me and then I developed them by practicing every day or every other day, weather permitting to go outside and walk barefoot in the sand and use this as a mindset tool to get myself through the lockdown, deal with challenges of living off grid, deal with my own anxiety and anxious tension, nervous feelings that I deal with on a fairly regular basis, if not daily, just from dealing with my job and family issues and life. And I think many of us are, if not all of us, dealing with those kinds of challenges on a daily basis. So to begin, these are a series of lessons, spiral lessons. They're multidirectional, where even the broken pieces and caustic elements form the whole. And shocker, the whole is ever living ever emanating, ever evolving. And yet you carry the essence of the whole inside of you. You are a fractal of living omniscience and you wear it well. I love to have fun with these things because I was raised to be a serious person and I am so heads down in my job every day that anything we can do to lighten the moment and have some levity, I'm all for it. So why use this process? Well, have you ever bought a program to learn something like a CD to take piano lessons, a DVD yoga or Tai Chi lessons? Uh, hired a coach or bought self-help or recipe books that you didn't use. I mean, most of it, I could point to things that I have packed for an upcoming move to 
plastic bins, tubs full of books and CDs, DVDs, programs. And the ultimate was when in 2019, preparing for a job layoff that never happened, thankfully, but not planning on being locked down and having businesses all around us close and shut down. Um, I had paid $12,000. It was the most I'd ever paid for anything in my life. That was purely for me to uh, take a business coaching program that I could put something like this. I had didn't have integrating the spirals in mind that I wanted to build some sort of program or have some sort of gift that I could offer the world and be able to go out like you've already seen with the books that I've written I wanted to go out and speak to people because I've really come alive when I'm emceeing a health event like I used to do every year at awakening into the sun I would get on the mic and it's like I would just come alive so um for actors, they'll they'll say that you have a charisma or that you the camera loves you or things like that. But that's just a feeling that I get. I, I don't people don't tell me those things. I feel it when I'm on the mic. Maybe because I grew up with a father who uh, ran a CB radio business, if you know what CB radios are. So we were always working together in his shop to fix and repair radios. And I loved talking on the mic. In fact, one of the jobs I thought I wanted to do when I grew up was I wanted to be a disc jockey. I wanted to be a DJ, but there weren't any female DJs really at the time. And so without a role model, um, I gravitated to singing. And I sang in choirs and school chorus and all these sorts of things. But again, it goes back to that thing of um, uh, loving the mic, loving the microphone. So do you lose interest or find that any of those programs, books, or lessons, they didn't really suit your needs, like that $12,000 business coaching program? It suited some of my needs, but I didn't have the time and space to implement it right away. Um, although I've used some elements from that even here and now because of this happening to me with the spirals. So I was able to, it did help me to codify and really think about how I could pull this information together and present it in, in this class format. So was the program or activities that you bought and set aside, did you not follow through because you started and then you felt like they were too difficult or that you didn't have time? Did you try to make some effort to implement but didn't achieve any lasting results? And that's probably because your new habits were trying to kind of jam up against some old you just couldn't get away from the old habit. Like, let's say your old habit is you watch TV from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. every night. Um, and so you have, what time do you have to implement something new? So you might not watch an hour of TV and start your new thing, but then if it doesn't really kind of light you up or fill you with joy, you you forget about it in a week or two and you're back to the old habit of 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. watching TV because the TV does stimulate us and it entertains us and excites us, right? So is your brain always on? Do you multitask, stack habits? Do you find mindfulness too energy draining? Well, integrating the spiral, and no, I haven't updated all the slides, is unique because what happens is this is a, this is a loose framework. It's very fluid and flowing. So it doesn't hold you to any certain types of uh, rigid, rigorous, uh, disciplined structure. It's not a box, it's a spiral. And we have three spirals. We'll get into that at the end. But 
those CD piano lessons, DVD yoga or Tai Chi lessons, coaching programs, self-help um, and recipe books, they're not flexible and they're not personalized to you. And this course is that because you make it what it is. This is just giving you a, a method or a methodology. This program, which I call a D program, because it gets us out of the old mindset, differs from most others because we're each creators. Again, I say this is a loose, wiggly, fluid framework where you design your own plan. And if you don't like to be told what to do, you'll enjoy this deprogram. You'll find the spiral process in nature, thus it nourishes you. So you remember I talked about a few minutes ago about the inform process because we're informed and it actually becomes our form, part of our form, what we surround ourselves with and what we take in. So we're using the spiral, which is uh, in art, they talk about the Fibonacci sequence. So you can look that up later and have fun reading about that and looking at some artwork based on Fibonacci. Change it up, have fun with this and grow in wild and unimaginable ways. Because again, we're not in a box. We're taking the lid off the box. So there's... What we're doing here with this loose framework is everything we're thinking about and we're bringing back into our day because one of course one of our prerequisites i'll mention here is first things first is put all those other things away so i'd like for you to within this week to two week period just put everything away put it if it's on your computer put it in a folder have one folder for you know this is all my stuff that I've already bought and paid for that I'm going to do like right now, my Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations are in that folder because I'm going to come back to them. I'm just not ready right now to bring them into the spiral. So um, this wiggly spiral process differs from new age or pagan. You, you may have already, you know, turned me off because you thought, I was just talking about uh, megalithic neolithic stone and we don't know who engraved those spirals and what they mean and I don't want to get caught up in something new agey or pagan and it probably was it probably did have something to do with pagan but people I think this is just my interpretation but I think we get caught up in these terms um, and labels of like new age to me new age is old age new age is this is what people used to do before science came along and before um <clears throat> you know various other kinds of like dogma and rigid structures but this actually aligns with nature and metaphysics because we're going to use the directions and it's important for us to know where our body is in space and time at any given time like I'm taking a circadian rhythm course right now. It's one of the things that I have embraced and brought into my my day to day into my spiral for four weeks. And so I'm learning about how um, when the sun, we say the sun rises in the east, really it is the earth spinning eastward in that direction, right? So the, even the planet has is situationally positioning itself. It's spinning, supposedly, every day, and it spins to the east in that direction. So we see it as the sun rising in the east. So the circadian rhythm says, okay, go outside every morning, stand barefoot. Got that one down. Right? Um, and look at, without glasses on, the sun coming up every morning one to five minutes now who can't take one minute to go outside granted yeah if it's cold if it's raining you know we got all those kind of weather excuses but if at all possible and you can do this 
that's look at that at sunrise and they even give you a window of 90 minutes so from let's say sunrise is at uh, 6 45 a.m well 7 45 a.m is a whole hour so you've got even longer than that you know by 8 p.m or 8 a.m i'm sorry you can walk be outside and walk out there and stand barefoot and get the the beautiful yellow orangey rays that are so healing for you stimulate through the cones of your eyes um, even if your eyes are closed you still get that in and it nourishes your body it informs your body right so is that new age or pagan just because yeah people were probably doing that when they lived outside you know millennia ago but I think it's because we've now picked it back up. We've realized science has shown us that this seeing the sunlight or sun gazing every morning is uh, resetting our hormones, which impact, you know, it all got, comes into the eyes, the brain, the skin, and it, um, it changes, it changes our body. It changes how we, how, how our body, um, be if you will how our how our body uh is it's our isness in this body anyway so i've hit on directions i've hit on elements and i've hit on time so using the spiral instead of a rigid framework or box this concept becomes personal it's flexible and it's simple i mean that's a very simple way to think of it right now What's spiral about that, though? We'll get to that. So we start by working with four directions, the north, the south, the west, and the east. <clears throat> I've hit on the east with sun gazing and sunrise, but then there's also the helping to reset your circadian rhythm by going outside at sunset for a few minutes as well. So that would take in the west. Um, north could simply be you thinking about what's... What's your true north? Um, I do a bodily routine that I call a gratitude flow. And that flow takes in all four directions where I'm actually doing a forward bend from yoga. And I'm thinking about all the blessings that I receive from the north, the south, with each forward bend to each direction. And I'll show you this at some point. Um, I bring all those in and I allow all those blessings to come flooding back into me and I embrace them. So as we progress, we'll work with the nine directions because there's actually more than four. That includes your north, south, west, and east. But it also opens you up to the above. And it, for those of you who practice Reiki, think about the, the Reiki golden light energy coming into your crown chakra, coming into the top of your head. The below, if you do shadow work, if you are attracted to shamanism, that will feel very natural to you if you know about grounding. All of that's working with the below, the frequency of the earth, the Schumann resonance. You see where we can just expand this out. It's all about expanding consciousness, really. The in, we've talked about informing our body. The through, when we do breath work and we're breathing in, we're breathing water, we're breathing in frequency, we're breathing in the elements, the chemicals within the air that we're breathing throughout our whole body and around. And that, because it's all omnidirectional, it's omni everything and limitless we'll practice how we may connect with the elements we align uh, with our individual tangible body personally and with the larger unified field the ever living and ever whole evolving whole of mind spirit and soul that the unseen the ones who are not in our physical presence are always with us and this is a belief that I've come to even embrace more radically in the last year while I've been working with Dr. Raymond Moody, who's the author of Life After Life, God is Bigger Than the Bible, and many books. And 
I've been volunteering to answer his email. Uh, writers come in with, this happened to me, this was a near death or a shared death experience or some other transcendent experience. And so they write to him, I get to read that first, I get to prepare a response. Um, I sit with that, I really hear that person and feel into their soul and then write the response, send it to the small team, and then they share it out from uh, the Dr. Raymond Moody email. But doing that work has helped me even more embrace this idea of the unseen are always with us. And again, that speaks also to omniscience because omniscience sees all, hears all. Every sense we have and even many more senses uh, are available to omniscience. So omniscience knows everything, knows how this is all going to play out, but enjoys the expansion of it. So intentions are key with this D program. Our energy flows where you focus your attention and mindfulness. That's your mindfulness, where you're flowing your attention. Where is your focus right now? My focus is on you and sharing this, this D program process or practice. So let's begin. Are we ready? So something that I saw in uh, Ireland, actually this door, the picture of this door was probably in Scotland. But again, that the theme about the circles, these weren't necessarily spirals, but it was, um, there's, uh, if you dig into what glass is, and my husband told me this there, glass is like glass in a window pane is uh, liquid but it's been baked, it's, it's at a different, um, it has a different um, uh, structure. To, in order to be hard and translucent glass, but that it could shatter, it can shatter with the right frequency. Think of the, the singers who hit the right note and shatter the crystal vase or glass. Well, glass is still liquid. There's still properties. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. So there's properties within glass that it's still water. It's still liquid. So um, when you see really, really old windows, look at them carefully. You'll see that they're thicker at the bottom than at the top. That's because gravity is still working. So these particular panes of glass have these circles. And I found that so amazing that I don't know how old they are, but they still continue to keep their structure. The, the circles remained and you could you could feel them. They, they were rig, rigid, <laughs> not rigid. They had ridges, <laughs> those, those spirals, yeah, or those circles. So now we'll talk about Going back to this idea of focus and where we place our focus. So when I'm doing my my daily yoga forward bend and I come back up into prayer position and I'm facing the north, I think about soil, which is under under my feet and under the building, my body and the winter. So I'm bringing in all these different elements about things I think about with the north because i live in florida i'm thinking about the north as colder so to me it resonates with more with that winter feel and that the soil would be be comforting and nurturing warm but yet cool when the air is really hot in the summer the ground is cool but the ground is really warm underneath like the blanket of snow in the winter so that brings me back into my body. What three things do you associate with the North? These are expanding consciousness questions now. And what three ways you can connect with the soil? Bare feet in the sand, seeds, plants, crystals. I keep crystals next to me all day long and next to my bed while I sleep at night because I'm in a house, in a, in a structure now that's seemingly more solid so I want to bring the outside in I have plants in the house and I have the crystals 
and I'm usually growing some sort of seed too on the kitchen windowsill. My feet are, I'm usually always barefoot. So my feet are normally bare and we have a tile floor that it keeps me grounded and connect to the earth. So what three methods inform your connection to your body? Is it only, do you only think about the clothes that you're wearing or the makeup you're putting on? How you're wearing your hair, glasses? Do you hold any intentions for or in your body? What are they? And look at your hand in the sunshine. This always used to fascinate me when I was growing up. Checking the time here. Um, do you see the tiny glittering particles in your skin? They look like grains of sand, right? I don't see them right in this moment because the lighting is subdued here in the room. But if I'm out in the sun and I look at my hand, you can do that in the morning while you're sun gazing. You'll see all these little sparkles. And to me, it reminds me of the grains of sand on the beach. So lesson one. And there is this planet, this one planet. We're all made from dirt and elements found here on the earth. But we are because it is also made of star stuff. So we out there. I don't have to let any conditioned thoughts scare me from gaining valuable lessons from the earth and stars, the elementals, the crystals, plants, or other living things seen or unseen because I know that my eyes scientifically are only able to perceive within a certain bandwidth a certain frequency bandwidth and that's also why I perceive colors differently if I put on my blue blocker glasses now blue goes away what was blue looks green Another example, in the next uh, course, in our next time together, I'll have um, a couple of other examples to show you. So they, all of these things carry energy that omniscience created. I put my hands together when I pray to connect the circuits. That's the whole point. And almost every religion or faith or culture does this for one reason or another, whether they're saying namaste, they're bowing to each other, or they're praying. Why? And why when we put our hands together and we leave them together, within just a very short period of time, you'll feel heat. You'll feel a warmth between your hands. And those of us who practice Reiki or energy medicine, um, we can... We can play with that and move our hands just a little bit at a time in and out, and we can drag that out. We can imagine like a ball of energy between our hands because we'll sense the heat. We can manipulate that. I use a bit of this kind of energy to live. Like a seed growing through the dirt, sometimes I struggle. But from that struggle to reach, 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 reach for the sun, I'm digging through the swell. Growth occurs, and eventually I bloom. I may not know when and where, but, but I bloom. Like a plant, I don't need to take more than I need. I just take what I need. I'm frugal, and I live simply seeing all the natural abundance around me, and I can and do manage my own energy. My energy is really all I own. When I'm gone one day, I can't take any of this stuff that's external to me with me, right? So growing my own soul, managing my energy for me is the most important thing that I can do, that I can focus on, and that I can work with as a practice every day. Uh, I think we're getting about time to take a break. Yes. So when we come back, we'll, we'll explore the South, the fire, the body and spirit, because now we're beginning to integrate 
and the sun. But I'll save that. Um, I would like to come back here for a moment. Stop sharing my screen. And again, thank you for being with me on this first of our four or five lessons. I'm not sure how long we're going to take and if we have more folks joining us and folks that begin to ask questions or want to have some conversation. Um, I may get through all the material in four sessions and then number five will be a Q&A and you can ask me anything. And if you don't want to come on camera, that's fine. You can um, send me an email. You can comment on the blog post. You can comment on the YouTube. However, um, I'm able to get this information out there. Then um, you can feel free to respond in whatever manner you choose. You have my email address as well. Um, I sit in utter fascination, curiosity, thanksgiving, gratitude. We didn't even do breath work first because I've been doing some of that in my blog posts and, and just kind of warming you up to that idea. But uh, real quick, I will. If you're having any issues meditating and you want to calm down, you can you can uh, use pull, pull the, grab the skin right here on the bottom and the top of your eyebrow, each eyebrow, and just pull it out. You want to pull it out this way. Okay, I have nails, so it's a little bit harder for me to do, do that, but just do that. And I, especially if it feels good, if it doesn't feel good or, you know, you don't do it to the point of pain. But you can go all work all the way around uh, both eyebrows. Interestingly, my granddaughter will do kind of do this or even this cross her eye just instinctively, intuitively. So it's really good to just get out. We carry a lot of stress and tension there. And the other thing that I'll teach folks is what was taught to me when I first began to meditate was take the tips of your fingers. I know it's difficult to see. But you just come up. So you're pressing in. You're pressing in on both sides. The bridge of your nose coming up and over your eyebrows and around. You can use as much or as little pressure as needed. And then you can also come back around. So I'll do many, many cycles of this. Not necessarily spiral, but a circle. And, or I may come back up and around this way. So you're not touching your actual eyes, but you're working on the pressure points of the bone. And you'll be able to feel this. Okay. And uh, you close your eyes, lay down or lay back in your chair and just do that. And even if you're thinking about something or you're trying to solve a problem, you'll find yourself so relaxed that you'll fall right into meditation, even if it's just a few minutes. Um, be easy. Take it easy on yourself with all this. Have fun with it. Go for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. You know, nobody's saying that you need to meditate 20 minutes. Well, okay, some people say that. I'm not saying that. Focus on your breath and your nose. Eyes open or closed, doesn't matter because some people meditate, have a great time meditating with a candle flame or a photo of a teacher they respect and admire or a beloved and maybe even someone who's passed or gazing into a mirror. All kinds of methods for meditation, but most all have you breathing in slowly through your nose, feeling for the air to pass through the inside of your nose. Bring it up, 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 top of head, picturing that, maybe even picturing the crown, your crown chakra opening up, picturing that flow coming in through your body. I like to picture it going all through my lungs, top, this part out here all the way through to the back of my lungs, out both sides, down to the bottom past that, um, that point, um, diaphragm, past the diaphragm down into the belly. 
So long, slow, easy, easy breath into the nose. Hold it when you get as much air in as you think you possibly can, and then release it. And when you release, release out the nose as well in a very, or some people do, like they're blowing through a straw, but make your exhale longer than your inhale. So if you're counting, at least when you're beginning this breath work process, you can count. So if you're breathing in to a count of four or five, hold it for one, breathe out for five or six or eight, whatever you can do. And you'll see over time, that'll build, you'll increase those numbers and you'll be meditating. And everybody tries to make it into way much more than it is. The point is you're tilling the soil, the inner soil of your body with your breath. You're breathing in spirit. It's mixing with your blood. It's changing your body chemistry. It's connecting you with your soul. Your soul is in your blood. And your soul is connected to your ancestors, your homeland. Uh, we could talk about that for hours but that's the essential what you what you need to know right now if i can be of service if i can help in any way reach out let me know so many voyeurs in the world i was just talking about this in another zoom call i had another zoom call prior to this so you know i i tend to for the most part, judge nothing good or bad anymore. It's just different layers of uh, understanding and different levels of frequency that we're on. I say everything comes down to layers, levels, doses, and degrees because, you know, too much of a good thing can be a poison. And sometimes we take a bad thing as a medicine, but it's a very small amount. So... It's getting harder and harder for me to judge certain things. And I think that's good because that allows me to live more in peace and in flow and in joy. Much love. See you next time.